Okay, so I wasn't really planning on making this video, but in the process of doing some filming of me installing some drum triggers for a future review, it's actually this drum trigger, in case you're wondering, I was reminded that not every kind of shell is perfect for drum triggers. I wanted to show a couple of different kinds of snare drum shells specifically that had given me issues in the past. So if you're in a music store trying to buy a snare drum shell to turn into electronic, just avoid these certain kinds of shells if you have an option. So this is my piccolo snare. And I bought this because I'd never had a piccolo snare and I was doing the Yamaha EAD-10 and I needed an acoustic snare and I thought, you know what? And I've never had a piccolo snare before so I bought it for that video specifically. And it was, it's been really fun. I love the sound of a piccolo snare. But I found one major issue if you wanna turn this into electronic. Because the shell is so shallow, this isn't great for internal triggers. So this is the Jobeki trigger. And as you can see, it's sticking way too far out of the shell. The rule of thumb for like installing triggers is you only want them to stick out of the shell about one to two millimeters. And as you can see, this is sticking out way more than that. Now, the lucky thing is that Jobeki designed the trigger in such a way where you can actually whack off a bunch of the bottom of this trigger and it won't affect the playability at all because there are no buttons or electronics down there. But I'm just saying, if you're at a store looking for a snare to convert, you might as well just buy one that's a little bit taller so it would fit this in the first place. And of course, I'm not trying to say that piccolo snares do not work with drum triggers. You can buy the side mounted ones, or maybe you know of one personally that works in such a small space inside of the piccolo snare shell. But just in my personal experience, piccolo snares aren't the greatest for converting into electronic with the internal ones. Okay, so let me give you a second example. So this one is my first ever snare. This is a Sonar Force 2001. It's a decent middle of the road beginner acoustic snare. And the main problem here is that if you take a look at the inside of the shell, you'll notice that there's like this dome shaped washer. And then once you take that off and the screw off, you'll notice that there's a little bit of metal sticking out from the lug. So this kind of gets in the way of a trigger when you're trying to install it. Most triggers don't really have a wide gap when you slide them into the drum shell. And this kind of gets in the way. It's way too large and you're gonna have to mod the trigger in order to get it to fit in here. It's kind of a pain in the butt. If you have like a snare or a tom that has like an inward bevel going around the inside of the drum, you're basically just gonna have it sort of like wobbling there even if you tighten it down a lot. Here's a second example in that same vein. We have a hand hammered snare that looks freaking sweet. It's probably awesome. But the problem is that when you're trying to mount a snare drum trigger to the inside of that shell, it's gonna be very bumpy. There's gonna be hills and valleys and there's not gonna be an even surface for that drum trigger to grab onto. Watch out for any sort of shell indentation and just make sure the inside of the snare drum has an even surface. Okay, so issue number four only really applies to bar triggers, like this one from R Drums or this one from Jobeki or even if you made one yourself, like a DIY bar trigger. If you have a bar trigger, try to get a drum shell that has more than one screw per side of the shell that you're gonna be mounting this to. Because if you only have one point of contact with the bar trigger like this, only one thing that's keeping it stable. What I found with my Jobeki trigger actually, inside of the sonar shell, as you can see, there's only one screw per side. This slowly began to rotate like that. It literally spun to this side or this side. I would be playing and I'd notice that the sensitivity of the snare drum would be getting weaker and weaker. And I'd take a look inside of the snare and I'd see that, oh, it's not even really in full contact with the drum head anymore because it's pointed sideways. So I'd have to straighten it up and then retighten everything. But eventually it always can turn to this side or that side. So I just wanted to give you a heads up about that. If you're in a store looking at a bunch of different options, just pick one that has two screws per side. That way there's no way that it can spin one way or the other. And that's basically what I did. Because I had those two issues with the sonar shell, the fact that the threads poked inside the drum and also the fact that there's only one screw per side, I just went to Music Go Round, took a look at a bunch of $50 used snares and just turned them over, looked at the resonant side of the head so I could see what kind of screws and stuff were on the inside. And I just picked the shell that worked best for the trigger that I was using to convert. And then finally, moving ahead to number five, which only applies to clip-on triggers. But if you do wanna buy a whole set of clip-on triggers, just know they'll work better with metal hoops versus wooden hoops. Sometimes a wooden hoop can be a freaking half inch or an inch across, and that just won't work with like the gap that you'll see on a lot of these clip-on triggers. 
So again, that only applies to a certain number of people out there, but wanted to mention it. The goal of this video was not to try to fear monger and pretend that half of all shells out there won't work with your drum triggers that you're trying to buy online. That's not the case. In fact, most drum triggers will work with most drum shells out there. There are just some edge cases that you might run across, and that's why I wanted to make this video. I was actually filming my uh, installation video for this review, and I just kept on running into different drum shells that didn't quite work with this trigger. And it's not the fault of the drum trigger. It's designed fine. It's just that this was a little bit too tall for a piccolo snare, and then also like having threads sticking into inside of the shell was getting in the way in installing this into a second snare. So I just wanted to give you guys a heads up in case you're in the middle of shopping for a drum set to convert into electronic, just take a look at the inside of the shell and make sure there's nothing in the way of you actually installing drum triggers in the first place. Let me know of any other pitfalls that I missed down in the comments below. Hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you all in a few.